The United States is committed to making sure that every dollar we have at our disposal will be sent to Ukraine by January 20th, Secretary of State Antony Blinken told journalists on Wednesday during a visit to the NATO headquarters in Brussels. Concerns about the U.S.'s ongoing commitment to supporting Ukraine, and to NATO more broadly, have been swirling since Donald Trump won the presidential election last week. Trump, with varying degrees of consistency, has been critical of NATO and support for Ukraine and Taiwan, two democracies under threat that depend on U.S. military support to counter Russia and China. He has shown little interest in the long-standing U.S. role as anchor of strategic alliances with European and Indo-Pacific democracies. Before the election, partners and adversaries already were re-evaluating their security arrangements in preparation for Trump's possible return. Blinken also insisted that now was the time for Israel to end its war in Gaza and called for more extensive humanitarian pauses in the fighting there. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, first, it's a pleasure, uh, as always, to be back uh, at NATO. Uh, we had very good discussions with Secretary General Mark Rutte. Delighted to see him at the helm of the alliance uh, in this critical moment. Uh, as well as with uh, all of our NATO colleagues at the uh, North Atlantic Council. Uh, the purpose of this visit is to focus our efforts on ensuring that Ukraine has the money, the munitions, and the mobilized forces to fight effectively in 2025 or to be able to negotiate a peace from a position of strength. Uh, we've obligated just uh, recently and pushed out the door another $8 billion in security assistance for Ukraine that was in September, another almost uh, half a billion dollars uh, just a few weeks ago, and President Biden is committed to making sure that every dollar we have at our disposal will be pushed out the door between now and January 20th. On the Middle East and on Gaza, um, let me be very clear about both the intent and the effect of uh, the letter that Secretary Austin and I sent uh, a month ago to our Israeli counterparts. The intent was to inject a sense of urgency with Israel to take necessary steps to address the dire humanitarian situation of children, women, and men uh, in Gaza. The effect has been that of the 15 steps that we urged action on, Israel has taken action, either in implementing or in the, being in the process of implementing 12 of the 15 steps. There are three uh, big issues that Need, still need to be addressed that come from the, the letter. Uh, short of ending the war, which we believe now is the time to move to that, um, we have to see these humanitarian steps fully implemented, sustained, and as I said, particularly with regard to pauses, having more extensive pauses. One final thing on this. Um, Israel has to meet these responsibilities. We will be tracking this every single day. Mexico is facing a second Donald Trump presidency, and few countries can match its experience as a target of Trump's rhetoric. There have been threats to close the border, impose tariffs and even send U.S. forces to fight Mexican drug cartels if the country doesn't do more to stem the flow of migrants and drugs. That's not to mention what mass deportations of migrants who are in the U.S. illegally could do to remittances, the money sent home by migrants, that have become one of Mexico's main sources of income. But as much as this second round looks like the first round, when Mexico pacified Trump by quietly ceding to his immigration demands, circumstances have changed, and not necessarily for the better. Today, Mexico has in Claudia Scheinbaum a somewhat stern leftist ideologue as president, and Trump is not known for handling such relations well. Back in 2019, Mexico's then-president Andrés Manuel López Obrador was a charismatic, plain-spoken, folksy leader who seemed to understand Trump, because both had a transactional view of politics, you give me what I want, I'll give you what you want. The two went on to form a chummy relationship. But while López Obrador was forged in the give-and-take politics of the often corrupt former ruling party, the Institutional Revolutionary Party, or PRI, Scheinbaum grew up in a family of leftist activists and got her political experience in radical university student movements. 
Scheinbaum made a point of being one of the first world leaders to call Trump on Thursday to congratulate him after the election, but during the call Trump did two things that may say a lot about how things will go. First, Scheinbaum said, Trump quickly brought up the border to remind her there were issues there. Then he asked Scheinbaum to send his greetings to Lopez Obrador, with whom Trump said he had a very good relationship. That might suggest that Trump believes that Lopez Obrador, the new president's political mentor, is still in charge, a view shared by some analysts. Not everything has changed for the worse, cross-border trade has topped $800 billion per year and U.S. companies are more dependent than ever on Mexican plants. But the U.S. Mexico-Canada Trade Agreement, or USMCA, is coming up for review, and Mexico has made legal changes that Trump could seize on to demand a renegotiation of parts of the deal. Scheinbaum has suggested Mexico won't give in even if backed into a corner. But standing up hasn't worked particularly well before. You see it, the criminal invasion, horrible, some horrible, deathly people. Mexico has been the victim of Donald Trump's harshest criticism since his first term in office when he accused Mexicans of bringing drugs and crime across the border. This time around in Trump's second term, China is likely to take some of the heat. But the focus remains firmly on Mexico because of two key issues, stemming the flow of migrants across the border and bringing jobs back to the United States. In Trump's first term, Mexico had a charismatic folksy president who was knew the art of the deal. He was able to negotiate an agreement where Mexico would agree to accept migrants deported back across the border even if they weren't Mexicans. And the United States turned a blind eye towards Mexico's faulty compliance in the war on drugs. <laughs> Things have changed this time around. Mexico is now the United States' largest trading partner with $800 billion in cross-border trade every year. Mexican officials hope that economic interdependence will be enough to stem, save off the threats of border closures or tariffs. But this time around, Mexico's new president definitely doesn't know the art of the deal. She's a leftist ideologue, and it's not clear how Trump will respond to that. Todos los programas del bienestar del presidente López Obrador.